guys here again. Uh, here I'm gonna go over the completed radon system that we created. So if you watched the part one video, we went over how to dig out this suction pit for active soil depressurization. Here in part two, we're gonna go over everything that's above the slab. So uh, we're gonna start with the extraction point itself, go over the U-tube manometer, the radon fan, the wall penetration, uh, and the exhaust eventually. So stick with us, we'll go over each thing one by one. All right, so you saw us with Shane, we dug out this uh, suction pit for the floor bushing using this six and a quarter inch core bit. Makes a really pretty uh, extraction point. The only thing that I should have done and planned ahead a little bit better was is uh, matching the color of the caulking to the floor, uh, but it's a warehouse, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but we use PDS's floor bushing here, then four inch schedule 40 pipe. Uh, you can tell it's schedule 40 uh, just with your hand because it's so thick you can't bend it whatsoever. If you can bend this pipe or it's yellowed at all, it's probably schedule 20 or schedule 35. That goes against all radon codes. So make sure you're using schedule 40 pipe. It's very thick. It resists cracking in the sunlight, which when we go on the outside, you'll see it's gonna be exposed to sun half the system most of the time. Um, here we have the system properly labeled, radon reduction system, do not tamper with or disturb. And here we have our YouTube manometer. You can watch some of the other videos on our channel about how this thing works, but the biggest thing to remember with the YouTube is if it's at zero, your fan's off. But we can hear, obviously, that our fan is on. You can hear that airflow. Uh, this fan is the PDS KTA low voltage fan. It's right now generating about 1.25 inches of suction, which is well within its operating range. So we're probably moving somewhere between 20 and 50 cubic feet of air per minute right now. That's all that's really telling us. These are uneven. So there's suction, there's pressure, there's air movement. That's really what it tells you. It doesn't tell you anything to do with the radon levels. This is not a radon gauge whatsoever. All right, so we've got the radon system. We went over the YouTube manometer. It's placed somewhere where you can clearly see it. Whenever you wanna check this maybe once a month, make sure it's still working. Then we have a 90 degree elbow to go outside. Here we have one of our cosmetic flanges. Some guys call these beauty rings or trim rings. All this does is it hides the cut through the drywall. So you can see here, if you didn't have this, the drywall cut, even though it's fairly a pretty one, still not the prettiest. Normally you would seal this to the wall uh, with caulking or some spray foam insulation, but I wanna keep it open so that I can demonstrate to in-person customers and contractors what this is. Um, then we have our uh, KTA low voltage wire. So this system plugs into the wall anywhere inside the home. This is a gauge that acts similar to a manometer, uh, but not exactly the same thing, but this is basically telling you that the fan is on and it's working. Um, check out our other videos on the channel to figure out how to read this meter a little bit more. Again, the most important thing to do to maintain your radon system is to test for radon every two years, test often. Uh, these are assembled here in our facility here in Colorado Springs. Uh, the KTA low voltage wire drops up to 24 volts, so under the National Electric Code, this can go outside without conduit. So we're going to go outside, and we're going to see the other end of the system. exterior components of our radon system. So we've got the extraction point inside, the four inch schedule 40 PVC comes outside. Again, we start with a cosmetic flange to make the cuts look nicer. Four inch schedule 40, 90 degree elbow. Then we have our radon fan. These are two noise reducing couplers from Fantech, the LDVIs. They're really nice. If only you could feel this video, but you feel the fan's got a little bit of a hum. And then you feel the transition fitting of the pipe below. You cannot feel any vibration whatsoever. And that really helps with the noise that you hear inside the system. So after the noise reducing boot, we have the transition fitting. These are made by Radonaway. These take the place of another 90 degree elbow, a little bit better airflow, and they look nicer. They get you right in line with, with the building. Then we have our hydrocep condensate bypass. We secured this with a galvanized horseshoe strap straight coupler to a downspout transition fitting, uh, three by four steel downspout, which is hail resistant, weather resistant, uh, and you need to make sure that you seal everything with caulk and PVC glue. So there's clear caulking on all of these joints. Now, as long as you properly secure the pipe on either end, couplings are all you need to take care of the fan. 
So the fan itself, these noise reducing couplings reduce noise through, they're called LDVIs, which stand for low durometer vibration isolating couplings. That's just a fancy way of saying they're very squishy. They absorb all the vibration from this fan so it does not get to either end of the pipe. They're really fantastic. Uh, fan brackets are no longer recommended for radon fans because they will just transfer noise to the home. Uh, so as long as you secure the pipe above and beyond this, most radon fans don't weigh more than 10 or 15 pounds. So the couplings will hold the weight up just fine. All right, here we have our 24 volt KTA cable. It is caulked with clear silicone and it goes out here to our fan that is properly labeled a radon fan and the electrical disconnect to disconnect. It's simply a quarter turn and you can hear the fan turning off. Uh, we go over the setup of this fan more in depth in another YouTube video on our channel, uh, but this is it in action. So these are manufactured in Lenexa, Kansas, and then they are converted to low voltage fans here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So here right above the fan, we have the HydroSep. Uh, it's a hydro separator, a HydroSep for short. Basically what this is, is a modified piece of Schedule 40 pipe. They will take all the condensation from inside the system and allow it to weep out these holes um, and falling harmlessly to the ground. Uh, this can extend your fan's life. Uh, we don't know exactly how many years. We haven't done any empirical studies on it, but I'll tell you all the 20-year-old radon fans I've seen have had hydroceps on them. It was created by Doug Clatter and a lot of the early guys in radon mitigation about 30 years ago. It does choke down the system for just a second, uh, but as long as you have at least 10 feet of piping or exhaust above it, uh, their studies have shown that it recoups about 97% per of the airflow lost. Um, radon systems have a tremendous amount of condensation in them. That's why radon fans are more expensive than similar HVAC fans with similar specs. It's because they're moisture protected, because soil air is wet air. Uh, it's also traditionally warmer air than outside. So when that air is pulled up and it's cold outdoors, all the water condensates inside here and that condensate will either freeze and come down in big ice chunks that hit the fan impeller or it'll just drip down and go through the fan back harmlessly into the soil. However, every time water goes through that fan, you're testing the limitations of its waterproofness, its water resistance. You just generally want to keep electronics out of water. So the hydro separator is a cheap, easy way to get rid of some of that condensate. Another thing on the hydro sep, we get a lot of people saying, my radon fan is covered in ice, is my system working? Well, the only way to know if your system is working is to perform a radon test. Um, but another good way is to check and see if the manometer has changed at all. If the manometer has gone up significantly, check the specs on that fan, see if it's in fact moving any air at all. Uh, but there could be, this the whole thing could be completely covered in ice. That's its job is to get that water out of here and it could still be operating just fine because these are vibration welded. This is one piece of PVC, the Fantec fans are. All the other fan manufacturers have a caulk line in there. But this, this can be covered in ice and the whole system can still be functioning. So do a radon test, check your manometer, make sure it's still working. Uh, best practice, try and put this on the sunny side of your building, south facing for the hydro set. Here's just another angle of the system coming outside the building to the radon fan with the electrical disconnect. LDVI transition fitting, you can see how it gets you nice right up to the building. Then the hydrocep, which we've secured. That way the pipe, the fan isn't holding the weight of the pipe. Then we have the straight four to four. And then this is an offset downspout transition. These are hard to come by. That's why they're a little bit pricier. Uh, but this again gets you flush with the house with your downspout. And then people transition to downspout because it looks real pretty. It makes sense. The only time you would know it's a radon system is if you saw the fan or you saw the top there where it exhausts harmlessly into outside air.